Today I'm going to be showing you my early 50s Gibson BR9 guitar amplifier um, which is about 10 watts or so and what's rather unique about it well firstly let me just say it's um, sort of like a 50s Fender Champ on steroids but the difference is um, it's got two little 6V6s um, as opposed to being push-pull like a lot of amplifiers that have got um, two output valves they're actually in series, which is rather strange as you can see the um, plates are tied together and only hit one tap. Usually um, one plate is connected to one side of the transformer and another plate is connected to the opposite side of the transformer and there's a center tap with, um, to B+, plus, which powers them up. But in this case that is not so. Another interesting thing about it, it uses an input pentode as opposed to a 12AX7, being early 50s, it uses all um, octal valves. So yeah, um, totally and absolutely triode free. So it's only got, really, when you think about it, two stages of amplification. Um, one valve being the preamp, which is the 6SJ7. And then it goes straight into the output section, the pair of 6V6s in parallel. Like a lot of amplifiers of this um, generation, or that vintage, it um, has a valve rectifier as opposed to diodes. So, should there be, I don't know, a nuclear fallout which renders all semiconductors completely unusable, assuming we still have electricity, I can still play guitar. Isn't that lovely? Anywho, another thing about it, um, you can see over there there's a little thing that says speaker field coil. It actually doesn't have a permanent magnet on the speaker, it has a coil around it to magnetise it, which is rather unique. Well, it's not really heard of it much these days, but you know, back in the early 50s I suppose it was relatively common, because magnets were relatively inexpensive, so I hear. I wasn't there, I was born in 1977, so I can't speak from experience. Another thing, it's only got a single volume control, no tone control. Um, if you sort of think about it, that control there is the master volume, because there is no preamp volume, it just controls the amount of um, signal going straight into the output stage. So as you can see it's a relatively simple circuit. In the description I'll give you a link to the to the Flickr gallery that I've got where I show how I restored it, replacing all the capacitors. I got it pretty much for a steal, about $500 shipped from the US, which isn't too bad for an amplifier of that vintage. Suppose they're not terribly well known, doesn't have Fender on it, Gibson aren't exactly known for their amps, but you know, it's very similar to the Fender Champ as I mentioned apart from the output stage. But it required a bit of work, it um, yeah, it doesn't look like it had been used in about 20-30 years, the power cord was rolled up and when I unrolled it it just sort of flaked to bits. All the wax capacitors and the electrolytics were all original, didn't risk even, you know, turning it on with a Variac, I just opened it up and replaced everything. But enough of me talking crap, I'm sure you want to hear what this thing sounds like, so I'm going to give you a wee demo. Actually, I lied when I said I wouldn't be talking any more crap, because I, well, I've got to tell you about it now that I'm in front of it. There she is, sitting there on a chair with the curly cable going into it. Let's have a look what's in the back here. Assuming we've got enough light, just flip it around. Alright. Probably a bit dark. Oh, and I just smashed my elbow on a sharp corner. But let's not worry about me right now. There are the four valves. Single volume control, two inputs, just an on-off switch. The very highly inefficient 8-inch speaker with the field coil, field coil to magnetise it. It's probably a good thing that it's rather inefficient. It means I can turn it up to 10 without the neighbours complaining. Unlike if I was to play my high watt going into my quad box, which I really can't turn up anywhere past about, say, there if I'm playing clean, or about there if I've got the preamp maxed out using my um, Range Master clone. See, this is one way to make enemies. This amp, on the other hand, is sort of neighbour-friendly, because I can turn up to 10, I don't end up suffering from tinnitus, and I can still be on friendly terms with the neighbours. So, I'm going to warm this thing up. 
plug in my 1975 Gibson Les Paul red sparkle top with P90 pickups instead of the standard mini humbuckers because I don't like the sound of mini humbuckers but I kept them anyway so all you people that are going to be swearing at me saying how dare you destroy such a vintage instrument with other pickups yeah shut up I kept them so I can always return it back to a knit original so um, yeah <coughs> anyway I'm going to plug this thing in and now I will shut up Alright, one thing I will um, mention as well before I play, this thing is warming up by the way, there is no negative feedback, so what does that mean to you? Okay, it doesn't feed part of the output back into the input 180 degrees out of phase to actually keep it clean, so it doesn't have that, so beyond a certain point you actually get distortion, which is a really good thing, it's what you want, this is why you play a valve amp in the first place, anyway this thing should be warm by now, so I'm going to turn it up to about 9 o'clock. Strum away on the bridge pickup. Weak. Weak as piss. You don't want that. You want to turn it up a bit more. 12 o'clock. Getting better, but due to the attenuation, you're sort of losing a bit of tops. So I'm going to turn it up to about uh, 2 o'clock. Nice mild overdrive. Neck pickup. But where this thing really comes into effect is when you turn it up all the way, which it is now. Neck pickup. this for a while and uh, when I come back I'm going to have the range master plug into it and then you can see how it really sounds when he's boosted. All right the range master is plugged in. Um, it's bypass at the moment so I'll have it in the treble boost mode which is the standard range master. But what I like best is when I flick the switch to mid boost which gives a bit more fuller sound and then I screw that up I could do this all day, but I won't, so I'll leave you to it, and I'm sure there's other YouTube videos you can watch. Um, as I said below, I'll leave a little link to the Flickr um, gallery showing you how I fix this damn thing. For now, I'll shut up. See ya.